Ukrainian troops have launched counterattacks against Russian army in various directions of Kharkiv region, Ukraine's general staff reported on Monday. The general staff said that Russian troops carried out 11 attacks on May 13 and second military clashes are underway in the region. Russian troops are trying to dislodge Ukrainian Defense Forces units from their positions and achieved partial success in Lukyanets settlement. Russian troops advance has been stopped. The general staff stressed that Russian troops carried out eight airstrikes in the settlements of Yudy, Volchensk, Lipsy, Grafsko and Veseloy in Kharkiv region. To strengthen the Ukrainian troops, pre-created reserves were moved to the Kharkiv direction, the general staff said, adding that depending on the development of the situation, the build-up of the group will continue. The troops are provided with the necessary amount of weapons. The general staff also revealed that Russia lost 97 servicemen in the Kharkiv direction since the start of the day. Russia also lost weapons and eight units of military equipment. Ukrainian soldiers repelled attacks in Sinkovka, Petropavlovka, Berestovo settlements of Kharkiv region as well as in Stelmakovka, Andrivka settlements in Luhansk region, where the enemy tried to improve the tactical situation. 19 military clashes took place in Sinkovka, Ivanovka, Berestovo, Stelmakovka, Novoigorovka and Makivka settlements. Moreover, 12 military clashes took place near five settlements in Seversky district. 27 military clashes took place in Grigorovka, Novi, Ivanovskoy, Kleshchivka, and Drivka settlements of eastern Kramatorsk district. Russia launched airstrikes near the settlements of Druzba and Severno. 24 military clashes occurred in Pokrovsky district in eastern Donetsk region. Five more clashes occurred in Krasnogorovka and Novomikolovka settlements of Kurakovsky direction that included the use of an airstrike. Ukrainian Kharkiv is going underground, schools, hospitals and theatres will be hidden in the depths. In addition to underground schools, underground operating rooms and intensive care facilities at hospitals will appear in Kharkov. Cultural institutions are also going underground. The mayor of the city, Igor Terikov, announced this during the telethon. We are working together with the Ministry of Health to create intensive care and operating rooms underground on the basis of our medical institutions, the mayor said. Terikov also said that the network of underground cultural institutions will continue to expand in Kharkov. According to him, there is a corresponding request from Kharkov residents. We already have institutions that show performances underground and we are scaling up this experience because there is a demand for performances for live communication in a safe space. It is important that cultural life does not stop, the head of Kharkov emphasized. According to Terekov, at the same time the city continues to build underground schools because the potential for opening schools at metro stations has already been exhausted. The first one should open soon. It is designed for 450 students, that is, it will teach 900 children in two shifts. As the mayor assured, there are already no empty places in this school. All are filled. Terekov also promises that students will not be left without attention. Underground universities are in the plans. Russia is systematically firing at Kharkiv with ballistic missiles and kamikaze drones. Recently, glide bombs have also been added. Military observer Roman Svitan believes that the Russians are deliberately terrorizing the civilian population of Kharkiv, taking advantage of the city's proximity to the border. The goal of the aggressor is to psychologically exhaust the Ukrainians. Putin is already prepared for a small operation against NATO frontier states in northeastern Europe. The head of Polish military counterintelligence has warned that Russian President Vladimir Putin is already prepared for a small operation against NATO frontier states in northeastern Europe as the alliance seeks to deter aggression from Moscow while bolstering Ukraine against the ongoing Russian invasion. Putin is certainly already prepared for some mini-operation against one of the Baltic countries. 
Jaroslaw Strozik, who was appointed to lead the Polish military counterintelligence service in March, told the Zinik Gazeta Prana publication. Struzik suggested the Kremlin's revanchist goals have been somewhat checked by the NATO response to its war on Ukraine. What the West is doing together to support Ukraine shows him that in the event of an attack on NATO, the Western response would be even greater, the spy chief said. According to Newsweek, much of the Russian military strength, typically arrayed along NATO frontiers, has been redeployed to Ukraine, where Moscow's forces have sustained severe casualties for relatively little gain. But Allied leaders have repeatedly warned that Russia intends to regenerate its military to threaten NATO borders while maintaining and expanding covert and hybrid operations. In this case, more than 90,000 troops from all 32 NATO member states are taking part in exercise Steadfast Defender, of which swift response is a part with drills including air assaults, armor maneuvers and fire support taking place in locations including Estonia, Sweden, Poland, North Macedonia, Romania, Hungary and Moldova. The mission, Swift Response, is being carried out by British-led forces in Estonia as part of NATO's biggest military exercises since the end of the Cold War, ranging from the Baltics to the Balkans. It comes amid an increasingly heated confrontation with Moscow following Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. There has been repeated warnings from the opposing sides, NATO and Moscow, of a potential conflagration. What is unfolding in Estonia are the opening salvos of what a modern conflict between great powers would be like, with the Western alliance making a stand on its eastern flank.